uh, building a search engine uh, for XKCD comics. Um, if you don't know what XKCD is, man, I don't know what to tell you. You've been living under a rock. It's just one of the most influential web comics um, that has ever existed. Uh, as soon as you're done with the stream, go to XKCD.com and fall into a rabbit hole of hours and hours of you know nerdy, geeky comics. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna build this search engine of pretty much the entire corpus of XKCD comics um, using Airbyte and using Datastax. Um, so once again, thanks for uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I wanted to uh, to take a minute um, to uh, to for us to introduce ourselves. Um, so I'm joined uh, I'm joined here by Bindi, um, an engineering manager from Airbyte. I'm gonna let Bindi uh, introduce yourself, but um, I'll, uh, I'll I'll go first. Um, so my name is Carter Rabasa. Uh, I work uh, for the dev developer relations team here at Datastax, uh, and um, I'm I'm just sort of your your typical uh, super nerdy uh, web developer person um, who's actually like relatively new to generative AI. Um, so I actually joined Datastax um, like a little over three months ago. Um, and prior to that, like I was, I was sort of your standard issue web developer. Um, I've used most programming languages you can imagine, you know, PHP, Python, um, even back in the day, Java, uh, Ruby on Rails. Um, and, but lately I'm more of a full stack JavaScript developer. Um, and I really hadn't done much with AI until late last year. Um, but now I've been diving into it, um, like with a lot of like enthusiasm and passion, um, and I'm super excited about it. Uh, and I can't wait to show you, um, what we've built, uh, and what you can do, um, with generative AI, uh, and Airbyte and, uh, data stacks. Uh, I'm located in Seattle, Washington. Uh, I'm a father, I've got two cute kids, uh, and a labradoodle. Um, and I am, uh, I am powered by uh, Seattle caffeine and coffee. Uh, so yeah, that's just that's a little bit a little bit about me. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it over to uh, to Bindi to uh, to introduce yourself. Thank you, Carter. Thank you for having me. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Bindi, and I lead the AI and LLM related initiatives at Airbyte. And we'll talk about Airbyte more later. Uh, prior to Airbyte, uh, I would like to say that I have a very diverse experience. I've started two companies of my own, uh, worked for bigger companies like Yelp, Dropbox, and Microsoft. And my experience kind of ranges from consumer products to building B2B products. And you know, most recently, like most of us, I got super interested in Gen AI. So kind of did a lot of exploration pretty much all of last year. And that is the exploration that actually led me to this team at Airbyte, where we actually kind of look at the AI use cases and how they can use Airbyte better, how we can serve those people better. So I really look forward to sharing, you know, my thoughts with you today and, you know, show you a little bit of Airbyte. And thank you for joining. Indeed, where, where are you dialing in from? Yes, yes. I am in San Francisco. Oh, of course. You know, it's the, uh, it's, it's the hive mind of the generative AI universe. Um, uh, obviously, so, um, so it, it, it's awesome to have you. Um, can you, where, where, sorry, did you say that you work at Yelp? I worked at Yelp, yes. So I actually uh, helped them build their in-house experimentation platform. Uh, that oh, that's was, awesome. Uh, I, I go ahead. No, I'm sorry. I, I I went I went to I went to high school with the the founder and CEO of Yelp, um, uh, Jeremy Stoppelman. I mean, yes. which of course oh, I know wow. you know I know yeah. you know who he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yes. yeah we're we're we're, bu we're buddies from back then. Huge huge Yelp fan. I'm. I'm, I'm really, I feel like we're going off script, right? Like I'm super interested that you built like their in-house experimentation uh, like platform and, and frameworks because that seems like a real natural step to like this world of, of AI, right? These sort of like non-deterministic, you know, A-B testing, like, you know, iterate fast and improve things. I, I think, I feel like that, that was like a nice, I feel like that almost like kind of projected you into the world you're in now. Yeah, that, uh, that, that's actually very true. And I actually did not realize that until I talked to Airbyte and I'm like, wow, my experience, you know, at Yelp is actually very relevant because we were actually building data pipelines, you know, to move all the customer data all the way to data warehouse so we could run experiments on them. So super relevant. And yeah, for AI, you know, everyone needs to move a lot of unstructured data, structured data, you know, so they mm -hmm. can do a lot of knowledge based uh, uh, analysis and uh, insights uh, for their customers. So I think data movement is, you know, uh, definitely very relevant. 
So I've got, um, I, I always do this uh, on our on our live streams. I like to ask our guests, uh, you know, a secret secret fun question. Um, it's it's never very hard. It, it may be slightly revealing, um, but I want to ask you, like, what is your like hot, delicious, energizing beverage of choice? Like when you're when you're starting off your day, or or and 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 whatever it is, like, where's your favorite place to get it? Oh, so I love Celsius. I don't know if what, uh, I don't. I don't even know what that is. Is that is that hot? I mean, that's that is Celsius is like some sort of canned or like it's, bottled it's thing, not right? Hot actually, since we're talking, uh, you know, beginning of the day. Well, I'm drinking coffee right now, but uh, usually I love Celsius. Okay. It's kind of like five hour energy or six hour energy, except that it's really delicious. Oh, wow. And I got hooked to it. You know, I go to the Equinox here, my gym, so they actually sell it. Uh -huh. So my favorite place is actually, you know, before I actually work out get a can of celsius and it actually has a lot of caffeine basically you know four times this cup okay and okay so so this is i'm so glad that you shared this so by the way uh, folks on the stream um feel free to share like uh your versions of of the answer to my question right like let 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 let, let, let us let everyone know like how you like to kick off your day i'm going to blow bindi's mind a little bit so i love coffee you know i live in seattle seattle has amazing coffee i love coffee um, but I, I drink decaffeinated coffee. Um, I, I know, and I, every friend or developer that I talk to, when I tell them that I don't consume caffeine, they kind of can't believe it. <laughs> and they think that I've lost my mind or, you know, that I must be sort of doing, I must be just, you know, uh, fueled by sugar or something. But yeah, I got off caffeine a couple of years ago. Um, and, uh, yeah, it kind of changed my life a little bit. Um, and your body Definitely, there's definitely a detox period that your body goes through when you kind of get off the caffeine. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's funny. I tell people this and they kind of look at me like I'm an alien or I have a third arm. Um, but it's, uh, <laughs> anyway, it's kind of, it's kind of what we're doing. Um, okay. All right. Awesome. So hopefully everyone out there has gotten a better, better feel for uh, who I am and who Bindi is. Um, we're just super excited to be here to nerd out with you about RAG and data ingest. And uh, in, in the spirit of that, uh, we're going to, we're going to start off with a quick introduction to Airbyte. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask Bindi to assume that me uh, and all of you uh, know almost nothing about Airbyte. Airbyte. Um, so we're going to get like a nice solid grounding in what Airbyte is, um, what it's useful for. Um, and I'm, I'm going to let Bindi take it away. And, uh, and, and Bindi, I'll just remind you that um, I may, I'm going to represent the voice of the average developer um, while you're talking. Um, so I, I might ask some clarifying questions as you're going along with your introduction. Um, so uh, yeah, so go ahead and take it away. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Carter. Uh, so I would love to tell everyone about, you know, Airbyte, you know, what Airbyte is, what we do. So Airbyte is, you know, a four-year-old company. We started during the pandemic and we started as exclusively open source. And now we have, you know, both managed offering and open source offering. So what is Airbyte? So Airbyte is a data movement platform. So basically we help you do ETLs. We help you move data from one place to another place, right? So say if you're an e-commerce company, right? And you want to actually uh, collect your data from Shopify, from Mixpanel, from Google Analytics, from Stripe, all the way to a data warehouse, say like BigQuery, so you can do some analytics on top of it, then using Airbyte, you can do that. So Airbyte has a concept of source and destination. So in this case, you know, the Mixpanel, the so Google Analytics, uh, the Shopify, those will be the sources of data. And then there is a destination, which will be, you know, your database. It could be something like even Google Sheets or Airtable, something that holds tabular data. So, you know, so having talked about that, let me talk a little bit about, um, let me show you, uh, you know, kind of what are the different ways you can use Airbyte. So the first off, you know, what we encourage you to use, and it's super easy to use to, and get started, is Airbyte Cloud. So Airbyte Cloud is fully managed. Uh, you can try it for free for two weeks. And it actually gives you a very quick way to create source and destinations. And I'll show that shortly. And it's a fully managed UI, so you don't have to worry about scaling. And we just take care of hosting all your infrastructure, all your, uh, all your sources and destinations. And one thing I actually didn't mention is, you know, when you connect your source to a destination, so say when you're connecting your mix panel to BigQuery destination, you're creating a connection. We call it a connection. And what we help you do is we uh, help you move data from your source to your destination on a regular basis. And each one of those uh, moving data piece is called a sync. 
So we can help you do sync mm -hmm. on any, you know, any uh, kind of uh, uh, cadence that you want. It could be daily, it could be weekly, you know, things like that. So that's Airbyte Cloud. Then we have what we call Airbyte Open Source. So like, like I said, Airbyte started as an open source company. All our stuff is actually open source. You can go to GitHub and you can look at all our connectors, you know. You can look at how we've implemented Mixpanel, Google Analytics, all of that. So you, you have the option of actually just um, uh, putting these uh, in your local machine uh, in Docker, or you can just host them in Kubernetes. So that way you can run our sources and destinations yourself. We also offer what we call as Airbyte self-managed enterprise. So you can imagine that a lot of big companies, they want all the infrastructure to be hosted by them. And in that case, you know, when they scale, they still want the monitoring and, you know, the reliability and the support that comes, you know, it's very important for a big company. So we actually offer that for them. And third offering we have actually is powered by Airbyte, which is super interesting actually. And we realize that it's becoming more relevant with the AI companies. So what is powered by Airbyte? So say I'm a, I'm a Gen AI, you know, a company that's building some sort of knowledge-based product. Maybe I'm building a, a product where I offer chatbots to my customers, right? So in that case, I want them to be able to ingest their data, right? Uh, and I offer that by actually uh, building my service on top of Airbyte. So what is powered by Airbyte is actually a white label Airbyte. It gives you all the all the capabilities of Airbyte in your application. So think B to B to B. So with that, um, I'll quickly show you um, how we can actually how easily you can create a source and a destination in Airbyte. I have a quick question um, for people that don't un, don't know the jargon. What does ETL stand for? Ex oh yes, yes, very good question. It's extract, load, and transform. So what okay. Airbyte does is extract and the load pieces. And transform is what you're seeing a lot of, you know, with, with RAG actually and with AI, where you actually mm -hmm. do a lot of transformation before you store the data in the vector database. So we don't do that directly, but we give you means to do the transform as well. But Airbyte uh, primarily the solution for extracting and loading your data from one place to another. Uh, yeah, that was a very good question actually. So now- yeah, no worries, I'll, 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 keep, I'll keep them coming, but go ahead. <laughs> So what you're looking at is actually, you know, what Airbyte, it's actually very simple. Your connections will probably look more and more complex. What you actually see is a bunch of sources that I have set up. So remember I was talking about, you can get your data from Mixpanel, you can get it from Google Analytics. Here I have set up some sources like GitHub. So when I go into it, it's super easy to set up a source actually. I just, you know, give it a name. I've given it my personal access token and I've given it a repo actually. So you need to give it a source to read data from. And on the right, you kind of have the setup instructions, super easy. And I've set up a Shopify source as well, just to you know show you. And I just wanted to kind of show that we actually have a lot of sources. We have close to, I would say 250 plus sources. So you can see, you can use Asana, you can use Azure, BigQuery, uh, and you know, it's like, it's a very long list. So you can go ahead and you know pick whatever you like. And we also tell you whether something is certified or community. So if it's certified, mm -hmm. you get better support on those sources. And then let me show you some destinations. So this is a very simple destination. So destination is anywhere where you can store data. So here I've chosen to use like Google Sheets, super simple. So you, you set a destination same way as you would set a source. Here I've given it you know, a spreadsheet link and I've authenticated it from before with my Google credentials. Mm -hmm. And again, on the right side, you you kind of have all the instructions, super easy. Uh, so it's it's hard to go wrong with that. And I have a quick question, Bindi. Um, like, do what is the process uh, of kind of creating new sources or new destinations? I mean, I, I know that I know that Airbyte, the core of it is open source. Is it as simple as submitting a PR? Like, how to how should developers think about um, getting Airbyte to support a source or a destination that it doesn't already support? Yeah. So say if say if you want to build a destination, you know, for your company, right? Uh, and underlying, maybe you're just building S3 bucket, but you want to label it as your destination. Then we actually have something which is I'm just I just uh, came to the the builder tab. So you can actually mm -hmm. we give you a no code of building your destinations and your sources. And we actually have uh, if you want to build it uh, more. So what we have what we have is we call a connector development toolkit. 
And using that, we ask you to conform to some spec. And it's super easy to actually build your own destinations uh, or sources. And if you to join our Slack channel, we actually have Slack channels dedicated to kind of helping you do that. Awesome. Thank you. And yeah, back to the destinations. Uh, here I have Google Sheets, and I just wanted to kind of show you what else we have to offer. Here we have AstraDB, and then you know a bunch of others like yeah, DuckDB, Google Firestore. So I would say we have close to eighty destinations, destinations mm -hmm. where you can move data into. So now that I've shown you the sources, I've shown you the destination. I want to show you what a connection looks like. So I go to my connections tab. And here you see, in an interest of time, I've already set up a connection from GitHub to Google Sheets. Let's see what that looks like. So here you're able to actually really easy see, you know, when the next sync will happen. What are the enabled streams? So this is actually interesting. So the way we know what to sync is you tell us what to sync, right? So mm -hmm. say everyone knows GitHub. Say you want to sync the issues from GitHub and the pull requests and the users from GitHub, like you see here then you kind of specify it to us. And we have that schema from before, actually. We show you a list of all the things you can pick, and you're able to like pick what's interesting to you. I'll oh, show that, you. So that makes sense. I mean, so like, yeah, so that, I mean, the destination defines what, you know, what, what exists, what the schema looks like, right? Like if I'm using Google Sheets, like I don't have to guess, like it's like you, you all know what the schema is, but then I have the power to select like, or I'm sorry, in this case, GitHub, I have this, I have the, the power to select the parts that I want and the parts that I don't want. Exactly. Uh, I'll show you a little bit more. So job history, you saw things succeeded. So this job I've actually set to run daily. You can run it however frequently you want. And we do incremental sync. So we won't try to sync the same records twice unless you want us to do a full refresh, which is also an option. And talking about schema, now you can see that we know about all the tables in GitHub, you know, assignees, branches, all of those, right? Mm -hmm. So when I was setting up the connection, I actually chose three of them uh, for myself, but you can choose as many as you want. And say if I want to actually choose more, then I'll have to set up a new connection because this has already been set. But since you have your source and destination set, you can easily set up a new connection. Uh, so yeah, so that was you know all about the, the connection, uh, super easy to set up. And one that actually, uh, like I mentioned earlier, Airbyte Cloud is you know super easy to get started. We really recommend if you want to give Airbyte a try, you can start with the cloud. And one more thing I also wanted to share with you is, oh, actually before that, sorry about that. So this is the Google Sheet that, was... that I'm actually writing data in. Yeah. Depth. So right, right, right. yeah, awesome. This is this. Oh yeah. Oh, and you put it. You put it in different. It, like I guess Airbyte was smart and it like put the different things in different tabs. Yeah. So Airbyte knows how to do that. Um, so every uh, so say if you're actually uh, loading data into uh, BigQuery or AstroDB, then Airbyte would actually know how to set up those tables in the, in those uh, destinations. Nice. And one more thing, something we recently launched, I really wanted to share with everyone. So I kind of went over all the offerings, you know, the cloud, the, the self-serve and powered by Airbyte. And the most recent product that we have launched is we call it Pi Airbyte. So this is actually inspired by a lot of feedback we got from people in terms of you know, being able to get started with Airbyte even quicker than using mm -hmm. Airbyte Cloud. So what Pi Airbyte is, is that it packages all of uh, Airbyte's uh, sources in a Python library. So what that does is uh, it gives you a really easy way to actually uh, you know, set up sources in your code. So just to kind of give you how easy it is, all you have to do is do a pip install Airbyte and setting up a source. In this case, you know we're setting source faker, but you can set a source GitHub really easily. Mm. All you do is set a source, set up a config. So you know if you're setting GitHub, then it'd be something like just giving your access token. And then you're able to actually uh, check, source.check checks that the source is already set up, the credentials are working, and you select all streams, and then you're able to just do a source read. So basically, whatever you saw in the Google Sheets that I showed you, you're able to get that just with you know five lines of code. Uh, so this is something that you know we uh, we're still in beta. Uh, we launched it in public beta a month ago. And so if you're wondering if you know Airbyte is for you, what are the capabilities? You don't want to commit to cloud yet. You can actually go ahead and use the Pi Airbyte. Give it a try, real quick. This is super awesome. I mean, my um, my read on this is like, hey. Airbyte had, I forget how many sources you said you had, but it was a lot, right? It was like maybe hundreds. 
Um, so my, my sort of read on this is like, hey, Python developers, like if you just want like the easiest way to get access to like hundreds of different data sources with kind of like a single API, right? You know, you don't have to learn like for 250 different APIs, like we'll sort of, you can just learn the Airbyte API more or less. Um, and then you can just, you can, you can pull all those, you know, from all those data sources, like right in your Python code. Yes, yes. And we actually see a lot of people use it for actually their LLM applications, right? So they would just use PyRBy, pull some data, do some transformations, use Langchain or Llama index, and then write downstream to a vector de destination. Uh, so right. go back to database. Yeah. This is super, yeah, this is super cool. Cool. Uh, I think that is all I had. Yeah, awesome. Wow. Round of applause for Bindi. That was uh, that was incredibly informative. Um, awesome to see. Uh, so okay, so now now we're sort of into. I hope everybody is grounded in what Airbyte is. Um, one of the things that's fun about doing these live streams is that we're inviting different awesome people uh, to join us. Um, but you know, a lot of you may already be familiar with DataStax and AstroDB because you've tuned in before. But you know, every every episode we've got like a new awesome person to introduce, representing like a product that you might not be familiar with. So I hope we're all grounded. One thing um, I didn't take care of earlier, and I'm so sorry. Uh, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, we would love to answer all of your questions. Um, so uh, I there is a if you look if you're in Crowdcast. Many much much apologies to folks on uh, you know Twitter Twitter or LinkedIn, but if you're here with us in Crowdcast, there is a Q and A widget on the right of the screen. It's a box that has a question mark in it. Um, if there are questions that you want me or Bindi to answer, um, please ask your questions uh, using the, that feature. Um, another uh, cool fun aspect of the feature is that you all can like treat it like Hacker News or Reddit and like vote up vote up questions. So if you see that someone's asked a question that you are like, oh, I also want to know the answer to that, um, you can go ahead and plus plus one uh, on those questions and they'll bubble to the top. So all right, so let's keep the keep the train moving. Um, so we feel great about Airbyte. It's amazing. Um, let's use it <laughs> to build this XKCD search engine. Um, so now I am going to share my screen. Let's get the screen up. Um, oh, let me, sorry, let me, let me hide this uh, slide. And good, so that is gonna go away. And I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And I'm gonna share, I'm gonna share the whole screen. I, tr I trust you folks. You're not gonna make fun of what's in my doc, right? Um, okay. <laughs> so, all right, so I've shared my screen. Um, okay, so first of all, as I mentioned before, uh, if you've never heard of XKCD, Maybe the best thing coming out of this live stream for you is simply an introduction to some of the funniest stuff on the internet. Um, I don't know how long XKCD has been being published. I mean, it's got to be well over a decade at this point, but go to xkcd.com. It's a webcomic that is like built, <laughs> built by and built for uh, geeks and programmers. Um, I think that you'll love it. So, all right. So what do we need to do? So if we want to create an intelligent search engine that can query, you know, decades worth of XKCD comics. Like, what are what are the tools that we need? Um, well, the first tool that we're going to talk about uh, is DataStax, and specifically um, our vector database called AstroDB. Uh, all you need to do, a lot like Airbyte, um, developers can sign up for AstroDB completely for free. So you just click on that try free button. Uh, you can you know you can sign up with GitHub or Google or just give us your uh, your name and your email address. And it is absolutely completely free to use uh, for for developers um, with uh, very very few limitations. Um, so really really easy to get started with. Um, once you uh, sign up for AstroDB, the next thing um, I'd like to talk about, and you know, Bindi just reviewed this was was Airbyte, right? So in Bindi's example, she was showing us uh, uh, sort of a, she was telling us a story about uh, synchronizing. Uh, data from GitHub and pulling it into Google Sheets. So great. Um, what do we want to do? Well, in our case, we want to pull data from XKCD. So Bindi mentioned that there are you know hundreds of sources. Uh, among all of these amazing sources is the XKCD source. You can go ahead and search for XKCD. You see it right here, and it is 
probably the easiest source in the world to configure because there's no authentication, there's no API keys, it's just an open API. Uh, so all you need to do is come here and click set up source. So awesome. So that's really easy for us to do. Uh, the next thing we need to do is set up a destination. So in our case, we're going to set up uh, AstroDB. So what does it take to set up AstroDB? Well, um, you're going to give the destination a name. Um, I wanted to spend some time talking about uh, this section right here. So they, first of all, um, like all destinations and sources, you have documentation in this right pane that help uh, help you understand like what your options are and, and what's happening. Um, but I'm going to give you the talk track. So AstroDB is a database that supports storing vector data. Um, so what that means in this case, the data that we're getting from XKCD is going to be information about all of the comics, uh, which is going to include text data, such as the title of the comic uh, and some, 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 alt, some sort of description fields as well. Um, this processing uh, section is what we need to do to actually process the text. So when you're building in generative AI, uh, generally, what you need to, if you have large chunks of text that you're processing, one of the first things you need to do is break that uh, text up into chunks. Um, so in this case, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go back to a pre-configured destination um, so I can, I can describe this in more detail. So in this case, for the demo, we've decided that we're going to break up the text that we're getting from the comic book into uh, by into sort of chunks that are 512 characters long. Um, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about why that's necessary. Um, as Bindi also mentioned, um, we, uh, you know, we're, we're able, because, because of what we're connecting to, we're able to, we're able to understand what fields are available to us. So in this case, uh, the, the API that we're accessing has certain fields that it outputs. So we're going to store the title, the image, and the alt text in our AstroDB database. And I'll show that to you in just a second. Um, the second thing that's really important is we need to, we need to tell uh, Airbyte what, what fields do we want to use to actually create the embedding. Um, so an embedding is uh, basically the vector. It's the, it's the array of numbers or the vector that you get back from the LLM. Um, I'll, I'll describe that in I'll describe that in the next section, but we have to tell Airbyte, hey, like what text fields are we using to create this embedding? Uh, and then we can kind of ignore the text splitter. This uh, because we have uh, because we've told it to 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 chunk based on the size. This is something we can ignore. Um, so the second thing that we need to think about is, oh, what what service are we going to use to create the embedding? Um, Remember, uh, the, the, the raw text that we're getting from the API, we need to turn it into a vector embedding. In this case, Airbyte supports uh, a bunch of different uh, embedding models. Um, and so in this case, we're going to use OpenAI. Uh, and we're going to, uh, and in order for that to work, we're going to have to populate our API key for OpenAI, which I've already done. Uh, finally, we get down to indexing. So this is, this is just a fantastic uh, way of visualizing the different steps that your data goes through before it gets persisted. So finally, we get to indexing. This is where the, uh, the individual documents and the vectors that are calculated are going to be stored in AstroDB. So the first thing it asks for is an application token. Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to uh, my AstroDB. So this is this is this is the the database that I've created, um, which I've cr creatively called Airbyte. Uh, this is my database, um, and here in my database, uh, I have easy access to uh, my credentials, which include my API endpoint, but also my application tokens. Creating new application tokens is as easy as just clicking this button, and then boom, I've got an application token. So going back to Airbyte, uh, I need to tell it my application token. I need to tell it my uh, AstroDB API endpoint, which once again was right here in the in the in the right. Uh, I have to define something called a key space uh, for the purposes of folks who are following our tutorials or playing with it. Just use the the the, the string default key space, and you'll be fine. Uh, and we have to specify a collection. So going back to Astra. Um, this database uh, can consist of one or more things called collections. 
collections, you can kind of think of, of a collection as like a table, right? It's a, it's a bundle of similar documents. So I've gone ahead and created a collection called XKCD. Uh, and that is specified here. In fact, actually, um, I'm going to take a step back. Um, you, can you can create collections using uh, the web UI. Uh, you can also create collections uh, using, using code. You can, you can use our API to create collections. Airbyte is really smart. Um, Airbyte will actually create this collection for me um, without me doing any work. So when you're going through this yourself, you just give the collection a name and Airbyte will actually create it for you. So awesome. So, uh, so we've talked about the source, we've talked about the destination. Uh, and then as Bindi mentioned, now all that's left is to create this connection. So this is our connection uh, between uh, XKCD and AstroDB. And I, I, won't, um, I won't belabor uh, sort of the demo, right? Um, you saw Bindi walk through the ability to kind of check, check in on the job history, check out, check out like what's in the schema, um, this is just a fantastic place to sort of monitor this live connection that you have. And of course, if you need to, you can resync your data. Uh, so what I want to do now is uh, actually dive into the code and show you all like what you can do after the data has been synced to AstroDB. So I'm going to go ahead and move over to uh, Visual Studio Code. Uh, I hope I've made, hey, Bindi, is this, is this text big enough? Uh, can, you, can you see this? Yes, yes. It's, it's pretty good, yes. Yeah, thanks. I made it as big as I could without being kind of like uh, comical. So, uh, so this, uh, so actually, I'll uh, I'll go back to my browser very quickly. Um, we wrote up a an awesome blog post on uh, exactly everything I'm showing you right now uh, in this live stream. We'll share the link out later. So, um, so don't don't worry if you're not uh, scribbling down notes. We're going to share links to the blog post and all of this code later. Um, this is a this is a Python code notebook. Um, so I want to show you exactly what it takes um, to build this RAG experience uh, using Python. Um, for folks who don't know what RAG is, that just stands for um, a Retrieval Augmented Generation. And I'll hopefully I'll explain, hopefully it'll, make, it'll be clear what that means after we go through this. So the first thing I need to do is just pip install my uh, dependencies, um, which include uh, RAGStack AI. Uh, that's just a really convenient library that we built here at Datastax that makes it easy to, to sort of uh, wrangle things um, with AstroDB um, and, then, and use Langchain. Uh, and a couple other dependencies. So I've gone ahead and installed all that. Um, now uh, we, need to, uh, we need to import uh, various libraries into our, uh, into our application, and we need to load some values from the environment, which I'm going to go ahead and do. So um, remember, uh, those I showed you uh, those. Um, in order to connect to AstroDB, uh, you have to have a, a bunch of secret connect uh, secret credentials. Um, I have stored those credentials in a .env file. So this load.env function um, pulls those values into this code notebook. Um, all right. Uh, and, and now we're going to go ahead and start uh, initializing these variables inside of our Python notebook. We're going to get the application token. We're going to get the API endpoint. Um, we're going to set the key space name and the collection name to the values, um, the exact same values that I set when I was configuring Airbyte. Air, uh, Airbyte. Um, we're also going to grab our open AI key. And I'll explain, I'll explain why we need to do that when we get there. So in, in here, uh, we're going to go ahead and initialize um, this OpenAI embedding model. And here, we're going to uh, connect to AstroDB, and we're going to initialize our collection. So awesome. So, so, so good so far. So now we need to, uh, we need to uh, define our query. So I'm going to go ahead, uh, this, the code notebook will let you uh, enter a value up here. Um, I'm just going to stick with the default, which is Kepler. Um, this, uh, this, is, this is sort of the, this, this, the, the query part of our search engine. Um, so now, the way that RAG works for folks that are not familiar, um, we have, in fact, I, I want to show this to you very quickly. So when we ingested all of this data into AstroDB, um, it was, remember, we we vectorized, in fact, I'll show this to you in Airbyte very, very briefly. Remember, remember that we vectorized uh, the title and alt fields from the API. 
So we took those string values, concatenated them, and we turned them and we, and we used OpenAI's embedding model to create these vectors. So if I just look at one of them uh, right here, this, is, this, is, this title is called New Study. The alt, sorry about that, the alt is this text right under here. Uh, when the results are published, no one will be sure whether to report on them again. Uh, and then this really, really long uh, array of values right here, this is our vector. Um, so going back to the code notebook, and, and going back to the code notebook, we now have to, we now need to take the query that we just entered, which was the word Kepler, and we actually have to turn it into a vector. Um, so, uh, no, I don't want to do a survey. <laughs> So this is awesome. So the, que the, the, the text Kepler got converted into this super long array of values. And let, let's see if I can copy this because this is actually like a really fun demo. Um, I apologize uh, for how long this vector of numbers is. In fact, maybe this is not worth it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if there's a sh an easier way for me to copy this. Okay, I can't. Um, but anyway, uh, this, this vector now represents uh, the input that we're going to use to query AstroDB. So now down here, um, using using the collection that we've initialized, we're going to use uh, we're going to find the closest vector to uh, to the the closest document that matches the input vector that we're providing, and we're going to pull out these three fields from our database. Now going back to Astra, in addition to the vector uh, attribute. We have the title, the image, and the alt. So going back to my code notebook, I'm going to go ahead and run this. And boom, we, uh, we almost immediately get a result from AstroDB. And then I'm going to scro scroll down just a little bit more, and we're going to display the result from, uh, from AstroDB vector search. Boom. Awesome. So uh, if all of you could, uh, if I could hear you, I'm sure you're clapping and cheering with uh, like tremendous abandon. Um, so this is this is pretty amazing. Um, there are, if I go back to uh, AstroDB, there are like well over a thousand records in here, um, and the this vector search was able to find uh, the exact one that we wanted. Um, we can we can keep doing this, right? So I, I happen to search for uh, you know for uh, a web comic. So the title of this web comic was Kepler. I searched for Kepler. Like maybe that's cheating, right? Like let's do a fuzzier search. So let's go ahead and rerun this and say, um, I don't know, like uh, bears and lions. Um, so there's kind of a, I'm hoping that there isn't actually a web comic that's called bears and lions. So we've gone ahead and set our query. Um, let's go ahead and vectorize that query. So there we go, bears and lions has now been turned into a different vector. Uh, and then and instead of finding one, um, let's, find, let's find a bunch. Right, like let's let's find all the documents um, that potentially uh, let's find the the, the five documents um, that most closely match uh, bears and lions. Um, let's see. Uh, sorry, let me move this to the end. Limit equals five. Awesome. So and let let's do that. Cool. All right. So the first one we found, this is nice. So like I entered bears and lions. The first one I got back was uh, a comic called Cougars, um, which I'm going to open up and I'll make it a little bit bigger. Uh, so so I guess Cougars is pretty similar to bears and lions. Uh, let's see what the let's see what the next one was. Um, sorry, I'm going to scroll over to the right. All right, the next one. Oh, here we go. So in, in embedded in this comic is actually the word bear. Um, and then uh, there we go. Uh, and then Greek for, for bear, I think, or Lat Latin for bear is ursus. Um, okay, so this is great. So this, this is exactly what we wanted to do, right? We wanted to use vector search to perform a fuzzy query uh, across uh, you know, thousands and thousands of documents and come back with the ones that matched, uh, matched the closest. So, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and hop, hop out of here. Uh, and go back to go back to the stream and stop sharing my screen. So just give me one second to find find that button. All right, I'm back, everybody. Um, I missed you. <laughs> it's really it's really weird to be staring at all these web pages and not seeing Bindi's face. Um, so yeah, so hopefully. 
awesome. Yeah. Look, uh, I've actually never seen the so I've been at Airbyte for two months, right? So I've never seen the whole process end to end. As in, you know, uh, yeah. actually putting it into the vector database and seeing the collections in there and being able to search on it. So that was actually really cool for me to see. I'm so glad I could, and I'm so, and and for folks on the on the stream, I'm sorry that I wasn't able to um, to like quickly copy that whole vector value um, in AstroDB, like in the Data Explorer, um, you can paste vectors in in the UI, and you can actually do a real time search um, against that vector. And and for like when you're testing and trying to debug, uh, it's just a great a great experience um, as you're trying to kind of see whether because look when you're building in generative AI, um, things don't always work that easily. Sometimes you have to swap different models in and out of your application or in and out of your right um, in order to fine tune the results that you're getting right. Um, so uh, so that's just a really useful tool um, to kind of quickly iterate and like see like if the results if you're happy with the results. So um, all right, so uh, I I'm going to I'm going to pull up uh, our our awesome agenda because we are we're starting to to wind down, um, but we are totally going to get to your questions. So I'm going to now turn my eye of Sauron um, to the Q and A, uh, and uh, we're going to start to to run through these things and get your get your questions answered. So uh, so Bindi, the first one is for you. Um, what uh, does Airbyte open source require running a database as well? Yeah, so when you run Airbyte open source, it creates a, a Docker container for you, and it actually installs a Postgres instance um, for you to work with. And so uh, yes. and same, uh, when you do it on production using Kubernetes, Kubernetes will do that for you. So there is a database involved in open source. OK, awesome. Uh, let's see, going to the next one, um, Daryl, uh, this is a long one. Let's see, suppose I'm building a RAG application. What are some of the ways to improve the RAG? I'm thinking of using something like key phrase extraction and embedding only these into the vector store to decrease processing time. Uh, is this a viable option? So this is a pretty, pretty informed uh, or pretty, uh, a pretty detailed question. I'd say um, I'd say the, the quickest, uh, we, should we, we should dig into this a little bit, right? So the, the first question is, um, I'm thinking of using something like key phrase extraction and, embed and embedding only these into the vector store to decrease processing time. So what I'm hearing you say is like, uh, can I decrease the total amount of data that I'm uh, that I'm ingesting or that I'm or that I'm sort of computing embeddings for in order to decrease the processing time? I mean that is certainly true, right? Like when you're uh, on the ingest uh, in the ingest process. Uh, you know, depending on the source, uh, the source that you're getting data from, um, you know, it's up to you, like how much of that data you want to, to, to sort of compute embeddings for. Um, and once again, like Airbyte offers like a bunch of different options uh, for what you can use to compute embeddings. I mean, the more, the more data you try to compute embeddings for, um, it's possible that uh, it may increase the amount of time it takes to run that ingestion process. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if you if there's anything you want to add to that, Bindi. Um, like, are there any? I guess I, I think what Daryl's asking is like, are there any strategies to kind of like streamline this process and only only calculate only compute embeddings for the things that matter? Yeah. So this is something that I went to a talk before um, last week, uh, two weeks ago, and I heard from some uh, you know there's a speaker from Langchain, and he was talking about how you can actually maybe embed the most important pieces, uh, put them in the vector database but kind of have a link to the documents, you know? So say if you're able mm. to receive uh, the key points, you're able to get to the whole context for it. So you don't actually have to uh, embed the whole document, kind of like a summary of it. So you know where the data is, and then you can refer to the actual document. So that will yeah. speed up things, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, I don't have too much more to add there. I mean, I think like when, it's funny, you know, uh, I actually really love Daryl's question because, you know, he's specifically really focused on the ingestion part, which is, a, which is makes sense because we've got Bindi and, and Airbyte here, right? Um, a lot of times when I hear about optimizing RAG, um, it's usually on the, the latter, the post ingestion part. It's kind of like, hey, like, how do I optimize like the actual results that people get when they interact with these things? Um, uh, and and so, sometimes that can, uh, a lot of that has to, a lot of that usually involves prompt engineering. Um, but I think, I think Daryl's question is pretty squarely like on sort of on doing ingest and like doing it more more efficiently. 
Um, okay. Uh, oh, and I should have I should have clicked on that, but I didn't. Sorry about that, Daryl. Um, uh, ooh, this is this is a good one. This is like straightforward, right? Um, can I have one source and multiple destinations on the same connection? Straight straight up product question. No, no, we can't. <laughs> so. Um, okay. You can definitely use the same source with multiple destinations. So say I want to push data from Mixpanel to BigQuery and Google Sheets, I can do that. And you can also use multiple sources with the same destination, but not on the same connection. You have to make different connections. That's a product. Totally. Yeah. I, and I told, but I think, I think it makes sense. I mean, like, I think it seems like, it seems like so long as you can use the same source with multiple destinations, it should, it feels like it should achieve the same result, right? Um, so, I mean, cause I think, I mean, ultimately like, I, th I think what Prakash is asking is like, look, like if I set up a single source and then, you know, new data flows into the source, like, like I want it to, you know, I want it to make, I want it to go to two different places. So, so it sounds like if you create two connections, but they share a source, then I think that would, that would sort of work, right? Yeah, it would resolve that. Cause if you already have a destination set up that is doing incremental loading, but if you set up another destination, that will make sure to sync all the data from day one. Yeah. Okay. All right. Awesome. Um, let's uh, let's keep going. Um, ooh. Does Airbyte support document permission uh, ACL out of the box? No. No, I okay. think I think I don't think so, because <laughs> that is a bit uh, very complicated for us to kind of implement, and so we leave it to yeah. to our customers to do that. Yeah, makes sense. And actually, uh, I think w the, this next question might might help with that a little bit. Um, uh, wait, where did it go? Um, well, uh, let's see. I was thinking like maybe Pi Pi Airbyte, you know, could sort of be helpful because it's like, hey, look, like that's uh, you know an application level concern. You know, like you know, use Pi Airbyte and sort of like apply like a layer of security like on top of what you get. And I don't know. Um, but here, um, are there similar packages, Pi Airbyte, for other languages? Which, hey, and, and Bindi, like, I am a full stack JavaScript developer, so I'm very jealous by what I'm seeing with Pi Airbyte. So do you have any good news for, for me? Uh, you know, a Pi Airbyte is still in beta in Python, so we don't have any plans for other languages yet. But if we see enough uh, demand for it, then we'll probably definitely consider Node.js. Okay. Well, me, me and Kevin. Um, well, I, well, I'm asking for JavaScript. I, Kevin, okay. I wish, I wish you, had, I wish you had told us what you wanted because Bindi's right here, and she, if it had been Ruby, perhaps that would have tipped the scales. But anyway, I'm, I'm kidding. Um, I think uh, Airbyte has a, has a Slack, is, is, your, is the Airbyte Slack kind of open to the public? Is it open for folks to join? Yes, yes. And if anyone has trouble finding it, just uh, email me, bindi at airbyte.io, and then I can, I can send you the link. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Um, all right, let's keep, let's keep going. Um, are there recommended open source models for RAG? Ooh, that's a fantastic question. Um, I, I actually like, you know, I don't have like a definitive singular answer for you. Like my go-to resource is Hugging Face. Like mm -hmm. when I when I when I'm trying to get my hands on an open source model, um, as opposed to a you know a hosted service like OpenAI, like I go to Hugging Face and I kind of poke around and I see see what see what they have. I don't I don't know if, I don't know if you have any better recommendations there, Bindi. I know I don't actually not for this one now. Yeah, um, yeah. Check out Hugging Face. Um, one thing I'll say is that there are I mean there are quite literally like. I mean, there are just dozens or hundreds of these things um, from small companies and big ones, right? Like, they, like Meta has uh, some op an open source model called Llama 2. Like there are, there are a ton of them. Um, and I, I'll actually tell everyone on the stream, like there's no such thing as like good versus bad, really. Like they're just, they're different. They're tuned differently. They perform differently under different circumstances. I think part of being a developer in the space is getting really good at swapping these things in and out and experimenting with them. Um, so yeah, definitely check out Hugging Face as a place to start. Um, let's see, ooh, man, we just keep getting more good questions. Can we extract the data from GitHub to Google Sheet using PyArbyte? Um, hmm. Not at the moment. So PyArbyte was built with you know data practitioners, uh, Python developers, and AI developers in mind. So it gives you access to all of Airbyte sources but it kind of leaves it up to you and how you interpret that data once you load it. So uh, okay. for PyArbyte, we actually have a concept of caches. And right now we support DuckDB, BigQuery, um, Postgres, uh, Snowflake, and MotherDuck. So uh, there's something that we're working on is how you can build more caches and more destinations and kind of move from one destination to another destination. We don't have that yet. 
Cool. Awesome. Yeah, it's in it's in it's in beta, folks. Um, it sounds like it's something they're really excited about and they're moving fast on. Um, all right, AstroDB manages the size of the embedding vector for different models. Um, I, I think I think what's being asked here is like, why did I t why did I use the value of five hundred and twelve um, for the the size uh, size of the vector? Um, the uh, well, in any case, um, I don't I don't I don't want to go back to my screen. Um, uh, this is but this is incredibly important information for folks. So when you're storing vectors in a vector database no matter what vector database it is, you need to define the dimensionality of the vectors that you're storing like in advance. Um, like you, you can't store different sized vectors um, like in the same collection. Uh, the, the actual value, um, the answer to the question of like, oh, well, how many dimensions do I need to store? That is, that's based on the model that you use. So when in Airbyte, when we selected OpenAI, um, what wasn't, completely explicit was which of the open AI models is actually being used. In that case, it's, uh, I don't know the exact name of it, but it's like the text ADA 02 model. And that model um, generates vectors of a certain dimensionality. Um, so that is, that is what we have to, that is what we have to define. I feel like the, 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 the 512 value though was not the dimension of the vector though. It was the size of the chunks. So that's, um, so just to be clear with folks on the call, like there's sort of two different numerical values you need to care about. One is the size of the chunks um, when you're uh, when you're ingesting text data and putting it into a vector database. Like you in the in the, the in the comic example, it's that's that's actually not the best example. Try to imagine that you're ingesting like documents, like really long documents. You're not going to want to take that entire document and turn it into a single vector. You're going to want to break it up into chunks. Um, and then turn those chunks into vectors. And this 512 was telling Airbyte, hey, like how big do I want my chunks to be um, as I break apart this text value? The other thing is the dimensionality. Um, in the Airbyte interface, we didn't have to define or, or set the configure the dimensionality because when you select the model you're using, it's it's baked into it. So that's that's not something that you have to do via the Airbyte interface. If you create collections um, using the UI and AstroDB, yeah, um, you know when you create that collection, you'll have to tell us like what the dimensions are because we because the the database just doesn't know in advance. Um, all right, we have we've gone uh, well over time. Um, this was just so fun. I love these live streams so much, Bindi. It was so awesome having you and learning more about Airbyte. Um, I want to let everyone know uh, that we're going to send an email out after this live stream uh, with links to everything that we talked about. So links to Airbyte, links to Astra, links to this blog post, links to the code notebook. So don't worry. We're going to get you all the resources that you need. Um, uh, definitely check out Airbyte. Um, definitely join their Slack um, if you have like certain things that you're, you're, you're asking about or want, um, or, or you sort of want to get connected to the folks. And uh, just thanks for joining the call. Bindi, thank you so much for spending some time with me. Uh, and uh, we look forward to seeing all of you on the next stream. So uh, bye, folks. Thanks. Bye, Bindi. Bye. Thank you.